Leonardo Escarcega. Hey, Roy. How are you? What is happening? How are you? Good. I'm very grateful to be here. I'm very happy to be here. I'm ready to get into really cool topics and hopefully I can give some gems, you know. I mean, I see a lot of people in your podcast that they give great, great advice and I hope I can be of some help. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this podcast would be a great continuation to 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 Greg because you have a similar vibe to him, which is super cool. Um, <laughs> I love Greg, man. I love, yeah, he's I love my Greg. guy. He is my guy. He comes into you know, the he mastermind. Says, he, says he's, he, he says that he's not. I'm like, yeah, you are, dude. I think you're amazing. Um, and yeah. Really the master usually doesn't need to say they're a master. Just saying. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, the the dude drops in um, for the mastermind. We have like the Six Gems mastermind, and and we're just you know we're we're just ping ponging there and having having a blast with this dude. He is such a huge sorry a huge <coughs> ball of light yeah and um he emanates and shines so bright and i i really appreciate him shout out to gregory he's probably listening shout out to gregory. um awesome, <laughs> leonardo tell me your story what brought you to here where where how'd you start with music how'd you get into sync and yeah Let's go from there. So when I was seven years old, I wrote some lyrics for um, a girl that I like in kindergarten. And, you know, you're young and, and you can't really comprehend what's going on. You just hear lyrics in your head and are very inspired. And, and you know, I wrote those lyrics. They came from the heart. And then from there, like something inside of me I felt like it was growing. And by the age of 14 years old, I saw this guy. Uh, I, I remember I was back in high school in Mexico. And I saw this guy playing the guitar. And I was very, very inspired. You know, I was like, this guy is amazing. You know, he's doing all these crazy things. And, you know, all the people surrounding him. I think that's pretty cool. I want to do that one day. So, um, I approached him and I asked him if he could please teach me guitar and he said no. <laughs> and, um, so then I, I got myself into guitar lessons for like two weeks and my own teacher told me you should have started when you were five because you're not going to be anything like this. My own teacher, I remember those words and you know, to me that was like fire. Because I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Watch me, right? So I I remember back in Mexico, I told my dad, I'll do all the chores in the house, whatever you need me to do. I need to buy a guitar. So he used to pay me 10 pesos uh, an hour. So I finally, anyway, I finally got my guitar. I went to the newspaper. There was a stand of newspaper. Uh, you know, I used to walk 40 minutes to that stand all the time and buy those magazines with the chords. <laughs> and I started learning guitar chords and and I started learning guitar progressions and and that's how I developed a love for music, you know? So it was already inside me, so I was already, you know, working on it without knowing. Then, you know, you're young, you got in, yeah, I got into Linkin Park, Metallica, all metal, Epic, all these crazy metal bands. And I, I was like, I really want to do that. You know, when I play the guitar like that, I want to have a, you know, a crowd of people cheering up. Every time I played a chord, they get all happy. And that was the start of my, of, of my love for music, you know. So I took it to the next level. Um, when I moved to Chicago, I started learning music production in the, you know, in the bedroom where I used to, you know, sleep and, and I used to play my guitar all the time and record my guitar. And I remember I used to have an exterior lyric cable and just one um, computer. And YouTube was a new thing. So um, I started learning little by little, uh, reading a lot because it was more reading online than watching videos. So I started reading a lot about panning and 
and yet I didn't really get it. Um, so anyway, I started recording my own music. I had music from 10 years or 15 years ago, um, and guitar was my thing. So long story short, I moved to um, to California, and I met someone. Uh, you know, I used to work security uh, as a receptionist back in LA, and I met this guy. It was 4 a.m. in the morning, and I was I was trying to learn how to play the piano on, on you know on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> which is insane. There was a program in the key where I was like, I really want to know how they do this, how they combine all this. Right? So I was just playing with the letters and trying to learn. And then he came and then his name is Corbin and he came and he's like, yo, you know, you're, you, are you a musician? And I said, um, you know, I play guitar. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to learn how to play the piano. Oh, okay. And that was it. And then one day he comes to me and it's like, let me show you something. So he invited me to his studio. He had a studio and one of on, on, you know, on the apartments I used to take care of. He invited me to the studio for like 10 minutes. And I saw all this equipment, this computer, the speakers. You know, I was, I was blown by, by, by what I saw. And then he told me, if you really want to play the piano, you need to study um, soundtracks. You need to study, you know, all these composers and, and this, this and that. And then he told me, do you know Hans Zimmer? And I was like, who's that guy? <laughs> who's Hans Zimmer, you know? So um, he finally uh, showed me a parts of the Caribbean, uh, showed me uh, Dark Knight Rises, you know, all these crazy soundtracks. I fell in love right away. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And I told Corbin, so how do I do this, you know? And he said, first of all, you need to learn the piano. Um, so he gave me a, a, a keyboard, like $200 keyboard. And, he, and I said, no, I don't want it. And he's like, if you don't want it, I'm going to throw it to the garbage. And I said, no, no, no. Okay. I'll take it. And I remember, um, not having a car. I went, I took the, I took, you know, I had the piano with me. I took it on the, on the train, took all the way to, you know, on the bus. I used to live with my, with my uncle back in Northridge and, and San Fernando Valley. And he saw me coming. From work, he's like, "What are you doing with that piano? Where did you, where you got it from?" And I said, "Well, uh, you know, this guy and this guy he gave it to me." And then I started learning on my own how to play the piano, and I had no knowledge at all of music, but I, I, I could play it and hear stuff and try to mimic what I hear in a way. And so she gradually was was the. Uh, this blessing that came to my life that I already had inside of me and I was just evolving, you know? So long story short, uh, I took it more seriously. I started taking, uh, you know, uh, music more seriously. And then I saw YouTube videos. I saw a lot of, um, you know, a lot of documentaries of music and, and books. And I was very, very happy thrilled by it. And, I was just learning. All I wanted to do was learn. You know, I always had this drive of music, and I always wanted to create. And I was, you know, I was being a creative guy. I used to play chess. I used to draw, but music was the thing. And um, you know, fast forward, I remember I was walking in the street one day, and you know, I. You know, I'm, you know, I, I am a, a man of God myself, so I'm at a prayer, and I just ask for knowledge and wisdom and for a push. I just need that. That's why I just need a push to see where I'm going with this. And two months later, I met my, my friend, my mentor, like my brother, Gildy Forrest, and that's how I got into sing. He started, uh, uh, you know, teaching me stuff. It was, it was through Instagram. Hey, how do you plan this? How do you? Do you do this? What, what do I need? What's a mod wheel? You know, everything that I needed to know. And it took me a good four years to, to gain his trust. And he gave me my first chance. I did my first job. You know, it was for a company, amazing company. It's called Sound Jetty. And uh, they told me, hey, you know, do you want to write a demo for this library? And I said, sure. And by that time, I was already taking evident courses online. I was taking Trailer Music Academy online because, you know, one day I remember I was back in um, 
back in, I actually moved from San Fernando Valley here to Orange County and I was back in this house where I used to live before. And I saw this trailer of Captain America and I was like, oh, I would really want to do that for sure. You know, how do they make this sounds and how do they, you know, make it sound so good? Um, so I learned, you know, about, uh, you know, the trader world and, and I was really, really into music already. So I wanted to learn about synthesis. I wanted to learn about sound effects. I wanted to learn about, you know, music composition, uh, you know, as much uh, theory as I, you know, could possibly take in. Um, and I dedicate a good 10 to 16 hours a day, you know, learning music. And, um, you know, it's, it's my life, man. I, I love it. <laughs> so long story short, um, I remember it was 8 p.m., you know, after all this and building trust and actually releasing, I released my first single for, with two trailer tracks on Spotify on July 2020. And Gildy saw that. And he said, I'm very proud of you. One day we'll, um, you know, we'll work together. And anyway, long story short, it was 8 p.m. one day. He sends me a message. He's like, we're looking for a horror track for this trailer. Um, uh, it's just a pitch, you know, don't expect anything. Do you want to do it, yes or not? And this is when I said, you, when life comes to you like this, it's called the sound of opportunity. If you don't take it, it's very, very hard for that door to be open again, you know? So I put my faith in it. I, you know, I said, you know what? Yes, I'll do it. I took on the, the you know, the work. I was 8 p.m. I ended up sleeping at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> um, I took the chance. And two months later, I, I remember I was at my job. Billy calls me and he's like, you got it. You got the placement. And so that was the... The, you know, a really good milestone. I was very happy, very thrilled, very, very excited. Um, you know, it's it's a feeling you can never forget. It's a beautiful feeling, you know. And I took it to to that point where, you know, I had that placement. So my my that that was a very good credit. Plus to work with, you know, some freelance work and work with Sound Jetty. So I start building my my portfolio. And then I got more jobs and I really went into it. And it's, you know, I, I, I met a lot of people, beautiful people. Uh, uh, Alberto from Mexico, he's an amazing composer. His name is Beto Cortes. He's my friend, like my brother. Uh, Hector Soler, I, I met him as well. And it's all through online, you know. Uh, we met, uh, I met Gabriel, I met uh, Andres. You know, so I met all these uh, beautiful people, um, and we started talking about the love for music, what we needed to do, how we, you know, could better ourselves, do uh, great, great things for, for, you know, for the future and work, um, you know, on ourselves and maybe create a team in the future. So that's how I started, you know, uh, taking things more seriously. I created a team of the Avengers, really, and we started. Um, going for it more so we you know i tackle stuff on my own or we tackle stuff as a team um gildy as well he you know he's an amazing person so he he um gave me the chance at many many projects and i took them very seriously and we worked together and you know he was the one who started my my, my whole career so i'm very very grateful and and till this day he's his, you know, family is like my partner and I'm very just excited what the future can bring. But that's how I got into sync. You know, you just got to take action. There's no other way. Learn. So the, the, in, in this time of your career, yes, you've, sir. yeah, you've had, you've had a lot of placements. I, I can definitely tell by your socials and, mm -hmm. um, well, it sounds like you definitely attribute it to community and you attribute it to, to hard work that you've, you were willing to put in and kind of hear the calling, uh, so to speak. Yes. And uh, I think uh, like, I think the most interesting thing about it is like most people 
don't listen when God is whispering, but then they 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 listen when they have to when when he's screaming. So like a lot of the times it's with unfortunately a lot of people hear it only in a very advanced stage. So like even 50s, 60s. I mean, I can see my parents. I can tell you like um, you can see how there's this awakening sometime in in people's life where they're like, oh shit, I was doing tech all my life and I, and and I felt I've been feeling miserable for 30 years. Um, you know, and, and, and I feel like it's an art form by itself to be able to, to, um, have the, um, that listening to that inner voice, that little voice that goes like, this is where you need to go now. How did you know that you wanted to go to the States? Like what brought you to go to, to California? First of all, um, I'm, a citizen, I'm Mexican American. Through my dad, he was from El Paso, Texas. So my dad was always, um, you know, we had a house in Mexico. We have a house in Mexico, and and then he he used to say all the time, you know, once you're 18, I want you to be over there. You know, I want you to do your career over there, whatever you want, go for it. You know, um, and he knew I loved music so much, so so much. Um, you know, him and my mom, they bought me my first electric guitar when I was back in Mexico. So I already had it, and, and, you know, I mean, and, and in that sense. And music was always with me since I was seven or even younger. Because I remember I used to have some sticks and just do some rhythms with the sticks. And, um, but anyway, so it was it was my dad. Did it you ever meet? Dad. Did you ever meet that dude who told you uh, who told you that you're? You're never gonna be a good guitar player. I'm just interested. Like, how do you do you know who he is? Even I know who he is. I never saw him again. There was many, many people who told me I wasn't gonna be anything. And it's funny um, because these people, some of them, they came and they said, "Can you teach me? What what what, what are you doing?" You know. So the same people that said you're not gonna be anything, some of them you know, came and, and asked for my help. And I said, sure, I'll teach you, right? I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't hold grudges to anybody. I'm not like, hey, you, you know, I'm not like that. Because it's not, you know, it's not of God. I don't do that. I'm a man of God, and, and that's my good. So, um, and you never know what the, you know, what those people went through or anything. So, again, I focus on the present moment. And back then, yeah, it was like hurtful. But if if I take that with me, and you know, and if I take a career with those feelings, I'm gonna fail, hundred percent. Yeah, there was um, there was one time I I went to a a, a a dinner in New York, and it was like this, uh, um, basically. Um, Jewish people all over the world can go to um, dinners uh, for Jewish people, and and in New York there's a big Jewish community, so they can go for for a dinner, and it's kind of a bit of a, like a a religious thing as well, but it's not really. But uh, anyway, I went to this dinner, and and there was this one dude who um, I told him, like, yeah, I want to be I want to be a rapper, and, and he's like, you. A rapper and and I mean like you see me I, I don't look like your 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 rapper guy but his his frown like the way that he looked at me and said you a rapper oh, I was no. like let's go let's go I I it's like it was it was not a log to the fire it was like he poured petrol on it it was that moment where I was like damn I got something if people cannot yeah. see what comes if if people can look at me and not see what's coming at them and get yeah. surprised every time they see me and they see my music then i got an edge like for sure um and and it's funny because if if i think about it most people that do the sim similar things to what i do they look like they can be that a, a lot of them a lot of them look like they can be that uh, um especially now in the like trailer hip hop and all these like epic styles. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at me, you can't tell that. And that was when I'm thinking about it. And when you're speaking about it, I'm thinking, damn, like that was 
that was actually my edge that 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 is still uh, uh, an edge for me that started then when that person looked at me and told me Hugh a rapper or wow. that uh, and and there was there was one time where where this uh, somebody where I, I, I studied uh, electronic music production in Israel and the, there was a dude who who he was super nice to me um, and I still follow his stuff and I'm sure that we'll get to collaborate down the line but he he listened to my stuff and he was like you're not there you're just not there like it, it kind of disappointed um, yeah. but it was like man that is these things are are amazing they are they just ignite the fire and they show you uh, also I feel like they show they can show a person, if they are willing to do it because how you're saying you're talking about a lot of motivation but what's the best way to know if you're built for something it's just to fail and to see if you keep going that's what the a, a better question to ask is what are you willing to fail doing and man like doing music i got spat on because i used to i used to um i used to street perform when i was 22 I used to street perform a lot. Like that's what I made a living off of for a year. And um, and I got spat on. I got like, t I cannot even count on my all my fingers in my body how many times I was told get a job. I cannot, like you need, you'll need to double, <laughs> double, triple, quadruple, five times my the number of fingers that I have uh, um, to, to get to the times, to, to the amount of times people told me that. Um, but that's it just goes back to to what you're speaking to and i love that it's just being able to after all that after all that fire after all these people who were like straight up mean to you yeah come from a place of compassion and say hurt people hurt people i was speaking in my in my instagram as well like hurt people hurt people that's that's what they do and and it's okay and if we come to these people with hurt we are we are we are lighting their fire and the wrong fire yeah. so so i feel like you coming up to people who um who look down at you and going hey let me let me help you out it's just such a huge superpower um that is that is very vital very very vital i i love what you're how you're speaking to that so thank you for sharing that I appreciate it. Uh, most, you know, my, my mom, my dad, they taught me well. And I cannot take credit for myself. You know, I was a baby. I didn't know anything. Uh, but they taught me morals. They taught, they taught me, like, if you're on the bus and then the lady, there's an old lady, you're not going to just sit there. <laughs> I'm not like that. You know, I have to literally get up and sit down, whatever it is. If it's a woman, they need to sit down. I get up, they sit down. It's just something that, I, I have to do it. It's important yeah. for me to do it. Um, and it, and it also like it's 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 very it's great to have because usually these things get uh, if these things get embedded by you uh, um in your in you early, you know your parents yeah. just showing you acts of kindness and you're surrounded by that needless uh, energy around you. You can develop that to where you have an Avengers team. That's that, that's it. That was a huge struggle for me. Huge struggle. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. It's um, you know, everybody's different. You know, you have to treat everybody differently according to um, who they are, of course. And you don't want to, you know, um, you don't want to take anything. Like if you're in a project, for instance, you don't really want to take anything uh, personal. You know, like if they're like, well, you know. Um, you need to change this synthesizer sound, and and if it's ego, that's what I'm trying to say. Your ego will take you to ruin. You have to let your ego go. You know, you have and and that part of hatred. I believe that if they come to me, um, not 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 my team, but I'm saying like if people come to me and they they say, "Oh, Leonardo, you're not gonna be any, anything in life," and I'm like. You, you know, if I go like that, then... Wait, wait, wait what, what did they say? Can you repeat that? Yeah, if they say, you're not going to become anything in life. And, and, and if I take it personal and my ego is so high, right? I believe that, and I learned this, very important in the Bible, I, I learned it uh, 
you know, reading books, you know, one of the books, Think and Grow Rich, which I love. Um, yeah. You know, I learned that. Napoleon Hill. Yeah, Napoleon Hill. Um, if, if I take that with me and if I give it back, right, I'm in a, in a, in a weak mindset, very weak. Because a strong mind will not take it personal. We'll say, you know what? It's okay. Um, I'll, I'll do the actions to, to make sure that my present moment, um, you know, I can achieve my goals, you know? And if you think that of me, I feel bad for you, really, because you sh we all should, you know? I was, I was watching this video the other day. And it was talking about people sometimes going against their own opinion, right? Oh, you don't share my opinion, you're, you know. So it's, it's none of that is good. None of that is good. You know, we all have different opinions and views, and we just have to respect that, you know. Um, and when it comes to sync, you know, um, they all have their own opinions in a mix or their own opinions in a project, their own opinions, in, you know, in life. And you just have to respect that and you just have to go, like they say, go with the flow. Um, just make sure, of course, that it's professional. Make sure that you do the right thing. Make sure that when you build a relationship, you do it with the intention of not getting something from those people, you know, but with the intention of building as a team. I think that's very, very important. Um, because why do I deserve all the glory and they don't? Right? Who am I to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I deserve those placements. I deserve that, and you don't. I don't know. You know, we're all the same. We're humans, and we're the same. So um, I believe that that's very, very important. So when these people that hated me back in the day, <laughs> right, they came to me and asked for help, why am I not going to give them the help? You know? You never know who you can change by uh, an act of kindness. Being, but an act of kindness that is that comes from the heart, not just because, oh, I just need to be kind because I learned this in a book. No, no. The book itself is, is guiding you to what you already are. Just people forget. And sometimes we need to be reminded, uh, reminded of, of who we are and really, really what we are, you know? And if a book is not going to dictate who you are, it's just going to guide you, right? Same with the Bible, it's a guidance of who you are. Who, you know, you're built for greatness. You're built to help people. You're built to love people. You're built to do all these beautiful things in this very short life. And, and a thing I learned is you have to take also every day as your last day because you never know. You know, so uh, two years ago, three, two, two and a half years ago, I was walking like a regular person on the street, and I had a car accident. I, my car hit me, I flew in the air, I ended up in VR, all these things, and I'm, I'm still here. So I didn't know, you know, I was going to get hit, hit by a car. I thought I was going to get pizza that night, right? So it just, you know, it just shows you that life is very fragile, and you need to take it, you need to love it, you need to embrace what is given to you, and use it, and use it. Yeah. yeah, that's why that's why expectations are so dangerous, right? Like um, we were speaking about uh, before before we got on air, we were speaking about expectations. Um, and I feel like, yeah, expectations are, are the killer and they are the killer of everything. Uh, I don't remember how they said it in Dune. Um, fear is. Um, ah, ha. Somebody please send me a message with this. But uh, um, fear is the, the eve. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it's uh, fear is basically the root of all evil. Something like that. There's it's 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 a saying like that, not the root, uh, root of all evil, evil. But it, basically what it says is it, fear is uh, is 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 what is what kills people. Basically, I, I'm I'm I'm. Um, uh, um, I will, I will get back to this. And after, after this, I record the intro and I'll, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll complete this because if, if, ah, anyway, um, 
but yeah, the the opposite of fear is love, and you know, like and and um, and love. I feel like does and to what you're speaking to, and we're getting into a deeper deeper waters here. But love is basically the most the the act with the least. To love is to act with the least amount of expectation, in my opinion. That's why Jesus was so wow. great because he didn't have that. Like he did, he suffer on the way to the, to being to to the cross. Of course, he fucking suffered. Like the, of yeah. course, he suffered. Yeah. But uh, um, did he have Absolutely. still have love in him? Absolutely. Like Absolutely. that's that that's the that's the beauty. Like he wasn't. It wasn't like he was walking with a smile on his face and and was like, yeah, I love my life. Yay, positivity. But he, uh, um, I feel like the the beauty about the stories from the Bible, from uh, Quran, from whatever you're reading is the act of love is basically isolated from all the other acts and does not live with with fear or expectation and i i can i think that expectation is the most um is it's basically fear in a costume you know what i mean like it's fear of 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 um of things not ending up like i want them and and it's basically fear in a costume in a costume and then when you come with expectations like you said you were coming into california into your um collaborations into getting a freaking uh, uh uh keyboard from somebody into like all these little acts of kindness were just like were just uh, the wind behind you that you were uh enabling yourself to feel um even if you feel like it felt like you're not worthy of it that's why like the story of moses is so uh touching to me because he was like i'm not worthy I'm not worthy of this. Like, uh, please, like God, go to somebody else. I know here you are. Here you are in the cave. You show you show me yourself. You're showing me yourself. But I don't feel worthy. And God's like, man, I don't show myself to anyone. The, uh, um, just just start to do it. Just start to 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 lead this. Yeah. And then, like day by day, day by day, he walked them through. Uh, uh, um, the the ocean. And that's what I why I feel like it's it's such a beautiful uh, uh, story because it, it it shows that yeah it's not doesn't take a day to trust. It took you seven years to get to 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 where you are. You know what I mean? But okay, I, I wanna I wanna go back to wh where did you start feeling like things were really moving for you musically? Was that when when Gildy got you the 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 placement? Was that before that? Was that when? When was it where you like, damn, I can do this? When I did the project for Sound Jetty. Mm. When I got was that a custom? Yeah, it was a custom. I, I got that one hundred twenty dollars for for my project. Hey. Was, yeah. strip and, money, strip money. Yeah, I was I was very happy. You and went to the like, strip club after that? No, no, I don't do that. But, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm um, kidding. <laughs> um. I remember, I remember, you know, the, mo the, 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 the beauty of the project was when Gildy gave me this verse and he said, you made me look like a shiny penny because the project was for Gildy. Gildy passed it on to me and he said, here, I give you this, no sweat, it's in your hands. You want to do it or not, right? I had a choice. And like you say, it's about action, taking action. You have a choice, you have to go for it, right? So I said, you know what, I'll do it. Because of the love I have for Gildy and for everything, I said, you know what? This guy is like really giving me all this knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. I should pay it forward, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect anything. I just, mm -hmm. you, know, let my, you know, let my work speak by itself. And there's something he said to me, very, very important. You let, you let your work speak by itself, right? So I sent the project. They came to me. They loved the, 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 the you know, the track. I mean, you know, I hear it right now. Like I could have done a lot better, you know, but I was mm. just learning. And but they were happy with it, right? And Gildy was happy with it. So I did it with no expectations, but with you know, with with lots of love to to actually um, finish the project, you know, finish my work. Um, say to myself, you, 
you really want this, you have to take action. If you really want this, you have to study. If you really want this, you, you don't have to put excuses in your head. If you really love this, mm. you really have to go for it without no, no um, excuses, without, oh, I can't do it, without this, this, and that. You, guilt is giving you a chance, right? The sound of opportunity came to your door, right? God is giving you an opportunity and is giving you a gift. It's bringing all these people to you. Yeah. It's up to you now to take action, right? And that's something I learned from that book, Think and Grow Rich. You have to take action. You want something, you take right. action. It, it's like sitting down here, now I want it, I want it. It's not, you know, people mm. that think that is the way. Mm. And we have much more, um, you know, um, power inside of us that comes from, you know, from God that gives us, the, you know, basically we have that gift of wanting something, taking action and making it reality. That's how it works. Mm. You take action to make stuff reality, right? Mm. Because we're human, right? We yeah. have this gift, you know, and you see it in the world. People, they, mm. they're very talented, amazing people. They take action, you know, the, you know, I mean, these people that they're like masters, like John Williams, right? Of course, he study hours, right? Beethoven, right? Study hours. Hans Zimmer, right? He learned the guitar. He learned all this production. And look where he's at, right? It's about, to, I think one of the main things is to take action and with full faith. And not a faith that is optimistic. Oh, I hope I'm this, you know? But with the faith that I, I can't see it, but I know that the, the steps that I'm taking will take me to where I want to be, mm. you know? And th that faith is when you wake up in the morning, you think you're going to wake up, but you don't know. When you go to work, right? At least for me, I have a regular job and I do this, right? Um, I don't know if I'm going to get over there. I don't know if I'm going to get to my studio, but there's no doubt in my head that I will. Mm. There's no expectations that, I, you know, that it will happen. I only do it automatically because I already have that belief in, my, in myself. Not in myself, but I have the belief inside of me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I believe in, in, you know, in the forces that make it reality, you know? So, yeah, yeah, but you know, that, that comes with also like something I have to say is sometimes for me, it, it, can also, it can also be tiring because, I mean, as you rise, I mean, I'm sure you, you, you know it, but I, I feel like everybody who knows me knows that I make music, right? But, but at some point, like somebody would come out of the blue and, and ask for help, like with, with, with nothing. Like just, yes. hey, can you help me, homie? Like something like that. Can we collab? Can we do all these things? Oh, yeah. And I find it hard to, to, to not like laugh like quietly. Like, I mean, sometimes, yeah, it's not, and, and this is not, I, I feel like I feel bad about even saying it, but I, I'm being completely honest with you. I'm, I'm like, in my head, it's like, uh, um, mostly, most of these people who reach out to me, that's why I started the podcast, by the way, so I can just put out the knowledge that I have, as opposed to, to, to laugh at people's messages, because it's really funny to me sometimes when, how, how unwilling some people are doing, uh, are, are um, of doing research, of going in and, and, and seeing what you work on and seeing if they're relevant to you. Like I get daily stuff now, like, can we collab? Can we do this? Can we do that? And I can't give myself to everything, but sure. you know what? Like, um, I, I don't regret it. I, I feel like there's something very Jewish in it. It's like, uh, um, again, it's like, what's 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 in what what's in it for for that person or you know how's the how are they trying to fuck me over kind of thing but you know um the the thing is in the end of the day i have to choose consciously what i'm giving my energy to and that is why i'm i'm actually doing the podcast so i can give all this knowledge to people so when they approach me and it doesn't cross me the right way which happens at times because i feel like it's a, it's a mix of a lot of things. Some I'm, I'm working on, some I'm not, but a lot of people want a piece of that, you know, like when they see success, they want a piece of your success. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so like, that's, th that's the thing. Like I find you and I, follow, I find Gildy and I'm like, damn, I, I, something in me, I want to be like you guys in a, in, in a way, because Gildy is a fucking, he's such a force of nature, man. He's just like so 
freaking positive. He is so freaking uh, um, on it and, 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 and has such a positive uh, and vibrant energy towards something. And I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm struggling with that, to be honest. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm putting the the podcast and I'm helping people out. But when people reach out to me without doing their research on me or without, uh, uh, or, or just, uh, um, you know, to throw another, another thing at the wall, I'm, I, I kind of uh, like, I kind of have a silent laugh and I, I keep going, but how do you go about these moments? So I've gotten messages when people ask me, to help them, right? Or when people ask me to listen to their music, I don't answer to all of them, but the ones I have answered, um, I, to give an example, it was uh, a guy who asked me to collab with me, right? Mm -hmm. I listened to his music and it was not there, right? Uh, at all. Mm -hmm. And I, and not to be mean, but to be truthful. Mm. I, and I didn't say that to him. So the way I did it, I answered to his email, right? And I said, because he asked me to collab, and I said, I said, sure, but with one condition, right? If you come to me in two years, and, you know, do you know? So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, I said, in the email, right? Mm. So do you know stemming? Do you know mixing? Do you know mastering? Do you know panning? Do you know gain staging? Do you know sound selection? Mm. Right? A couple of questions, right? I mean, in our world, we know what that is, right? Mm. So I basically told him, if you don't, it's okay. Um, I don't, you know, I, I can't collab with you because I don't, you know, I take my job very seriously and I, I think that what they're looking for, like a client, what a client is looking for is this really professional sound, right? Something along those lines, I said. But if you come to, you you know, to you know, I give you two years and if you learn these things, you can't collab, right? But you have mm -hmm. to show me that, of course, your level has to yeah. go up, right? Yeah. Um, and it wasn't with, you know, with hatred or with like, hey, you can't collab with me. I'm, just, you mm -hmm. know, I'm such a badass. I, I hate to be honest, like I hate people when they're like, you're a badass Leo and all this. And I, I don't hate it. I just, I feel like we're equal. We mm -hmm. all can learn and we can all achieve things regardless. If you really want it, you will achieve it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, going back to the story, I told this guy, um, I asked all these questions, told him, if you have any questions, ask me, you know, maybe you can, you know, I, I don't hear any modulation in your music, so maybe you can work on that, you know, learn about this, this, and that. So I gave them all these gems, all this stuff. He never replied back to me. Whoa. So you really don't want it. <laughs> you, you think you want it, but you really don't want it. And we go to, uh, you know, um, to a story that that I have when I was back in, in, in this other house I used to live. Um, I was with Gildy on the phone, and I asked him a question, and I said, why did you give me a chance? Why, why me, right? Ego was so high. Like, why me, right? Yeah. And Gil is like, look, you're a very nice person. You're a very nice guy. Um, but if you didn't do what I said, you know, like you give me all this, you know, knowledge, and he said, if you didn't take it, if you didn't take action, you know, you know we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. You know, and, but you took action. It was your drive. And I saw that you were doing the things I told you to do. And because you mm. did them, I saw how you were going for yourself. Right. Mm. And, and it was, again, action and that love for doing really something out of my comfort zone. Mm. Right. Sometimes you're in your comfort zone and you're like, I'm good enough. You know, you have a job. You have you, know, you want to be like the rest, you have a job and come back, eat, go to your job and do that your whole life. That by all means, you're happy, go for it. But for yeah. me, it wasn't like that. For me, it's like, I want to learn. And I really love music and I really love the sounds and I really want to learn, you know? And the yeah. very first thing I did was ask God for help, you know, for wisdom and knowledge to go, uh, not, not my own wisdom, 
but I wanted the wisdom of God so I can know, like, when my ego is hitting, like, oh, no, 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 this is wrong, you know, I have to trust, you know, I have to trust the process, I have to trust what is given to me. And, and it was that, basically. So when people come to me, they don't know these things. You know, they don't, they don't really know these things. They, they just ask, and like you said, they want a piece of success, right? Hmm. And they come, and they just want it right away, like that. Hmm. They want it. Hey, I want this. I want to be like you and trailers and stuff like that. It was funny. I have a story, a really funny story. That, and I laugh because I remember um, how we were working on a project, you know. Our team and I were working on a project. And um, this guy, out of the blue, this other guy who knew one of my team, team partners, and he's like, hey, uh, you know, I saw you guys doing all this stuff, PlayStation and, you know, doing stuff with, you know, with um, with Lionsgate and what, whatnot, right? Um, I, I Basically, I want a piece of that, right? And mm-hmm. I have 20 years of experience doing this and, you know, um, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to help you guys. And, and we're like, well, first of all, we don't know you, right? Mm-hmm. And, and second of all, well, we're not that mean. So I remember uh, my, my friend, Beto, right? He gave him a chance. Uh, he had a brief or something. And then the brief was about heroic music action and um, like really marble like music, right? The stuff you hear on trailers. Should have sent and, it to me, bro. <laughs> kidding, and, I'm kidding. And so Beto gave him this task of, okay, so you have two days, you know, to finish. And that day, I think Beto asked him, so how you doing, man? He's like, oh, man, I already have four minutes done. Mm. <laughs> so it was like, four minutes? All right. Well, let's hear it, right? So this guy, oh, my God. This guy created a track that, and not to talk about bad about the guy. He just needs more knowledge. Um, but the track was not good at all. You know, let's be honest. It was not good. It was It was really bad. I think he, he tapped his guitar and he put some piano in it. Mm. And it was cool. Um, so he didn't do the, you know, he wanted to, it's like a pyramid. You want to go from here to here, but you can't. You have to really take it step by step and learn. You know, so I think people don't see that, that you really have to learn. You have to take this as, you know, as a learning curve, you know. Get out of your comfort zone. You really want to do this, what I'm doing which everybody can do it, by the way, right? Everybody who's willing to do the work can do it, right? Everybody who's willing to listen can do it. Everybody who's willing to let their ego out of the picture can do it. Everybody who loves, you know, uh, the gift that is given to them can do it, right? And we all can do it. We all have that. We all have a brain, basically. So we all can do things because we have a brain. So it was basically that, that... um, that's how I take it. It's like when, when I get a message from someone asking me to collab, that's my, that's, that's where I draw the line. Like you really want to collab, like what, you know, what do you, let, let me see how much study have you done, why you've done, you know, and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's something very, um, I don't know, something very like you learn from, from that too. You know? Yeah, there was uh, a dude not too long ago who um, who sent me, uh, how do I, uh, on LinkedIn, uh, hey, my name is this, how do I get on your podcast? Uh-huh. And I'm like, uh, well, send me your por- portfolio, let's see what you got going on, um, let's see what uh, you have, uh, what do you have, and, 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 and we'll see. And he sends me his page and I see like, it's a saxophone player. Cool. Um, Seems like a professional saxophone player. His his site is a bit dated, but nothing about like sync or anything like that um, at all. And I'm like, do you have any placements in in the sync world? And he's like, what's sync? And and that's the moment, you know, like that is the moment where it, 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 I mean, for all of y'all who are on the way up, I feel like it's it's important to know to weed out. And and the reason is, again, people want to get from A to Z. 
in a second. And, and I can find these people way faster now because I, I have a question that I like, I have a, at least one or two questions that I will ask and then I will completely know. Um, and I will also go like, do you have something that fits my, my specific needs right now? You know, like, or, or something like that. And they're like, nah, um, uh, I don't know. What do you like? You know? And, um, or, and, and that, that just tells me it's, it's not, it's not a way of being, uh, I don't think it's a way of being mean. It's a way of, of, of saying, Hey, I have important things to do today. Like I am making an album for Universal today when I hang up this call. What do you have to offer? What do you have? What's your value? And, and I, I commend you for even listening to that dude who sent you four minutes. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, maybe, it's probably a good lesson for him and, and whatnot. But I feel like I wouldn't even get there with that person because um, even though like it, it's a super cool approach, you know, to, 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 to get it openly, maybe that guy would have been freaking awesome. Um, but to me, that's what I'm, what I'm saying in the end of this, I feel, I, I love our conversation because it didn't even go to the places I wanted it to go, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, like it's, it's just, um, th there has to be some sort of, uh, relationship and, you know, like the, the biggest thing that this podcast has brought me is, is genuine relationships, you know, like we're, we're going on on masterminds right now every week and i'm just like meeting these f fucking jedis you know like and 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 that are becoming my homies and then like organically these are the first people i would think about when i get a, an opportunity like so 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 wouldn't you rather get an opportunity like that you know what i mean like uh, i had um i had a showtime placement my first my first big showtime it's like for for the the middle heavyweight uh, Carnelo fight, it's like it's a, it's a yeah. So it's a it's a big one for me. But the cool thing about that placement, man, and and I mean, I was so in shock because I didn't even see the placement. It was my friends. <laughs> my friends are the ones who saw it. The my That's friends, amazing. my homies are the ones who brought it in, and wow. and. Yeah, I don't know what it'll bring financially. It's not a buyout. It's it's a it's a it's a it's probably like a micro sync and and I don't know like royalties from YouTube or whatnot. Uh, whatever, whatever uh, um, it brings. But to me, it's there's two things here. First of all, it's a huge freaking fight. It's a it's a so and and there's 45 seconds of my music only in the in the in the credits, which is it's huge, um, and. And the the sec the the um the thing was the great thing was this track would have not been able to make it over there if not my squad if not my people who I let listen to it who told me hey man this is not good enough your vocals need to be deeper in the mix your vocals need to be more forward you you need to um like your your um your articulation there um. Is not you need to you need to shorten it. My my homie Jeremy, shout out to Jeremy. I fucking love this dude. I'm going to stay with him in um in uh in the states uh, in a few weeks when I go there. And he's he he was like the track's called Bigger Man, and I I sang it very um long, like I sang it la 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 la. And he was uh he was like no no no, you gotta shorten it. You gotta go la 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 and and. And and that yeah, created the found the, the that created the foundation of the track, and amazing. that created what people are addicted to in this track, and what people are are know it when they listen to it. So I mean, like, without the squad, I would not be able to say that I got this placement. So to me, it was yes, it was a win for me. But I'm pulling up my homies with this. Like I'm my next placement is gonna be featuring one of these homies. So I feel like. If you are if you are listening to this and you are in the beginning of your journey, instead of going to people who are ages ahead of you, start with people who are maybe like a step or two ahead, a step or two uh, in 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 your direction, somewhere in your vicinity, people you see yourself growing with. Who are these yeah. people? Put your see who are hardworking people you can you would be so happy to make money with. 
Like yeah. actually ask yourself these questions because when push comes to shove and your placement is is uh, um, is airing and you feel so blessed and not even because of the placement, it shows something. You yes. know what I mean? If that person would have sent you the track and you would have gotten the placement in a second, boom, 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 it wouldn't have, it was the lottery effect. It's the lottery effect. It's not, it's not always maintainable. So, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. I believe that, you know, in everything that I have, right, you know, everything that I'm doing with Saint, everything that I'm going for. Uh, is because of the team that I have, for the people that actually believe in me. You know, there's a saying of uh, the principle of the suggestion of Napoleon Hill. It's like, I will believe in myself, right? Um, and I will use others for the sake of helping others as well. So, mm. you know, mm -hmm. um, some, something along those lines, because it's about team effort, teamwork, you know? Um, and some of my, you know, you know, bigger placements is because of teamwork. It's not like, oh, I did it. You know, no, 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 no. That's garbage, to be honest. You know, you have to know that you're here because uh, also other people provide their knowledge. Other people, you know, like your story gave you, um, hey, what, you know, change the percussion here. Maybe, maybe you can try some sticks here. Maybe you can add some different synthesizer here or FM synthesizer, whatever, right? Mm. Um, and if you have to be really, really uh, slow to speak this this in the Bible and quick to listen, right? And if you listen, mm. you will gain much more knowledge than you think, and that's wisdom. Mm. Be wise to use the knowledge that's provided to you, you know. And that's why I believe wisdom, knowledge, than yourself, right? Mm. God. So it's, uh, it, yeah, you, if you're a wise man, if you listen, you're a wise man, if you take action, you're a wise man, a wise uh, individual, a wise uh, uh, woman, if you listen, right? You know, I'm not a woman, but, you know, there's composers there, you know, female, you know, they, they, they listen, you know, if you want to listen, you really want to do this, go for it, right? Yeah. Go for it. And, but listen, listen, you yeah. know, you can be like your ego you know, be like, oh no, I like it like that. Oh no, why are we changing? This? You know, if there's a story of Arnold Schwarzenegger speaking, like when he said, "I'll be back," and then Arnold wanted to change the script, saying, "I will be back," because he was a robot, and he's like, "No," you know. And then the director is like, "I am the director. You really want to write my script? You know, I'm, this is what I have in vision." And that became. One of the you know the most known phrases yeah, you know yeah, yeah. around the world. I'll be back. You know, it was amazing. He, uh, he doesn't. He doesn't say I will. He says I'll. I'll be back. Yeah. Ah, okay, I'll okay, okay. I thought I will. Anyway, yeah, yeah. It shows. It's in the, in the documentary actually on Netflix. They show they show it exactly how it happened. It, it's so cool. Um, yeah, and man, I I feel like the the thing that that comes up. It's like. Yeah, wisdom, knowledge, and all these things. Uh, um, in the end of the day, I feel like it comes from curiosity, right? Like it all comes down to to curiosity and the ability to maintain. Not, I mean, I'm not a. I would say I'm a good listener. I'm not a good uh, information main, ma maintainer. That's why I love editing my podcast because I'm I'm gonna forget all you told me. Then I'm gonna listen again. Then I'm gonna remember. Then I'm gonna maintain all of it because I'm writing okay. notes because I'm like actively listening. Um, yeah. That's where I gain the wisdom. You know what I mean? Like uh, right now, we're having an amazing conversation. I'm taking the taking it in, soaking it in, letting my sub subconscious uh, take it in. And then when I edit the episodes, is when I actually feel like I'm I'm getting the wisdom um, because I'm making it mine in the second time and. Yes. And what I recommend is even if you are listening and you're not wise yet, be curious because that's how wisdom is created. Wisdom know. is created by curiosity and, and openness. And that's what, I, that's what I love about, I feel like, this, this interview and, and this, the energy that you put out there and 
we'll probably have to we'll probably have to to link in person when I uh, because I'm coming to LA in two weeks. Uh, so we'll have to. No, w- holy shit! It's the twentieth. One and a half weeks. I'm in LA. Holy moly! Oh my Isn't god. It? Anyhow, <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to link. Um and and. Yeah, man. What's what's next for you? What's what is your kind of uh, uh, vision? Where do you see yourself uh, in in the world of music? I see myself like this is going to be probably very different, or maybe not. Um, I used to see myself like you know what uh, I'm thinking from here to ten years, and I want to be like this, right? But right now, I'm like I'm just going to do the work. I'm gonna plant all these seeds, right? And I know for sure, with full faith, the faith that I was mm. telling you about, mm. that it's gonna happen if I do the right things, right? Mm. Now I'm not expecting it because life can change in, in any given moment, you know. So mm. I pray to God and I said, just you know, this is what I'm gonna be doing today, and today is what I have, right? Um, so with that said, with today. Like, I can plan ahead to become a really good, first of all, a really good composer every day, right? And I never want to stop learning. I don't want to become the mastermind of all composers. No. I want to keep learning. I want to stay, you know, learning. And I do want to have my music, you know, one day in a video game. I do want to have my music, more trailers. I do want to make a living out of, you know, my music. Um, you know, I have my own finan- financial goals, you know, uh, making 20K a month one day, 50K a month one day, you know, with royalties. But if I want that, it's going to take action and it's going to take hard work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I see myself like that, like, okay, I have these plans, but I need to take action. <laughs> mm. yeah. Sick, man. Um what is maybe a last piece of wisdom you'd like to, to leave the listeners with before we wrap it up? I'll say believe in the gift that you have. Never doubt it because having doubt is fear, right? Mm. So believe, right? Believe in the gift that is given to you by the higher force, right? Mm. And believe that you can make it, that you can do it. All it takes is hard work and a leap of faith, right? And you take the steps little by little, one by one. You know, a house is not built right away. Mm. A tree is, it doesn't grow right away. When you eat food, it doesn't go to your system right away to the, you know, the right places where it needs to go. It takes time. So while you wait, you prepare yourself. You're, you know, you're doing the work and you know gradually you will evolve into a mm. more knowledgeable uh, being you know a more knowledgeable person you will have more knowledge you will have more to give mm. instead of taking you know so i believe you know um you need to like you need to believe in the gift you know and i encourage everybody to believe in god of course but i can't force anybody but i do encourage everybody to believe in what they're capable of with no doubt and just go for it Mm. yes wow that's going to be the name of the episode believe in your gift for sure yeah i love that that's that's all that's what the that's the the theme the theme so man i just want to commend you and thank you for coming into my life and i'm sure there's a there's going to be a lot of conversations coming and Thank you so much for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you, Roy. I really appreciate it. You're amazing. Um, your story also inspired me, and I learned a lot from you. I learned from, you know, a, a lot from, from the stories from other people you interviewed, Greg, and, uh, you know, all these beautiful people out there and talented. And I, I really want to take it in. Again, you know, think about it myself, too, and just revive it in my mind and just go, you know, put it in my heart because here it will never go away. <laughs> mm. All right, buddy. All right, my friend. Have a good day.